Recently, a wealthy Globe Earth proponent named Will Duffy launched a campaign dubbed The Final Experiment, which he claims will finally settle the globe versus flat earth debate forever. The results of this experiment are allegedly so conclusive that once conducted and completed, all flat earthers will be forced to concede and admit defeat. So what is Will's brilliant idea? What is his ingenious experiment to finally silence all globe skepticism? Invite 12 flat earth YouTubers and 12 globe earth YouTubers to Antarctica in December to see if there's a midnight sun. In other words, the final experiment is not an experiment and not even a demonstration, but merely an observation. In typical globe defender straw man fashion, Will is conflating a celestial observation with our terrestrial foundation. He's claiming that the motion of a light in the sky overhead somehow gives proof of the shape of the ground underfoot. In reality, the existence of a midnight sun in Antarctica no more proves the globe than the non-existence of a midnight sun in Antarctica proves the flat earth. It's tantamount to inviting a contractor to measure the dimensions of your floor space, and instead of taking measurements of the floor, he climbs a ladder and starts measuring the recessed lighting in the ceiling. Then, after doing some calculations and extrapolations based on his ceiling lighting measurements, he tells you definitively that your floor is curved. The only reason this straw man argument even has any legs to stand on, are because a couple suspicious, shilly, so-called flat earthers who I have repeatedly called out as disinformation agents, like Jaron from Jaronism, have claimed that they believe a midnight sun in Antarctica somehow does prove the globe. In a recent interview with Will Duffy, Jaron explicitly stated that if there is a midnight sun in Antarctica, then that is evidence for the globe and a big problem for Flat Earth. In reality, this is not a problem for Flat Earth at all, nor is it evidence of a globe. The only reason Flat Earthers have claimed a midnight sun likely doesn't exist in Antarctica is because of how many clearly fake videos have been made claiming to show a 24-hour sun in the South. It's difficult to find any clearly legitimate videos of the midnight sun in Antarctica, whereas in the Arctic, there are countless, clearly genuine videos of the phenomenon. Whether or not there is an Antarctic midnight sun, still water is always level, the horizon is always flat, and there is never any measurable curvature. The Earth remains a level plane, regardless of any solar observations. The motion of a light in the sky overhead cannot possibly prove the shape of the ground underfoot. Besides, there are geocentric flat Earth models like that presented by Lady Blunt and Albert Smith in their book Zetetic Astronomy, which fully account for an Antarctic midnight sun. In their model, the sun follows a northern and southern circuit in such a manner as to allow for a midnight sun phenomenon in both the Arctic and Antarctic. Others have speculated that reflections or projections off a dome firmament could produce a midnight sun effect in the Antarctic and others still have speculated about a sun simulator technology which can effectively create a second sun. I'm personally quite skeptical that there exists a 24-hour circling sun visible in Antarctica, but regardless of whether there is or not, has no bearing on the shape of the Earth. Over a century ago, when these same claims were brought to the Flat Earthers of the Universal Zetetic Society in 1904, President Lady Blunt responded, we have made inquiries from various persons, and we find that the longest day in any place further south than the Tropic of Capricorn increases in length as the latitude increases, or distance south of the observer. It follows, therefore, logically, that if we were to go further and further south, the longest day would keep on increasing until it filled the whole of twenty-four hours. Then, of course, the midnight sun might be seen. Testimony has now been given that it has been seen and this testimony has been admitted in Zetetic literature, thus proving, speaking generally, that Zetetics are willing to learn and admit of known facts. Whether we can explain these facts is another question. But as we have before intimated, that whatever further facts we may find, which are proved to be real facts and not fancies, we shall admit. But while admitting them to be true Zetetics, we'll never give up their primary fact, that the surface of all still water is level 
and that the earth, or land portion of the world, therefore a plain.